Yes. In San Francisco. In San Francisco, right. The great, the great capital of the world. Yes. Well, I mean, was it obviously it's not that significant because you had to really dig deep in order to, you know, to make recollection of that. No, I well, I was not perhaps understanding your question, but of course I think most African American men have had this experience of going into a, a bar and all of a sudden you've asked for at least three or four pieces of identification with all the rest of the children just walking through the door. Um, that happened so many times in San Francisco, but he actually started to have a boycott of the bars. And that's in fact one of the reasons that I knew Harvey Milk, because we sat down with Harvey at the time who was had just become a member of the board of supervisors. I had known Harvard for some other things. Um, but we, I reached out to him and explained to him the situation that had happened on Castro Street. Um, and the outpouring of people who responded to say they had the same experience they just wouldn't allow me in. I had a passport and a driver's license. And that still wasn't sufficient now with evidence of my age. Um, let's just say we closed the bar that night. Mm -hmm. uh, right side that there was going to be a bar. Right. We weren't in. San Francisco? Well, amazingly, I really didn't go out there because I was gay. My parents and my aunt, my yeah, aunt. It says here that you came back gay. So. I came back gay, that's what I, I, mean, I, 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 I already understood that there was a difference between me, but I was still confused about what my redoubtable orientation was. I knew I was attracted to men, I knew that was not the most powerful thing to do. Be still sort of working that all out. And I went out there to spend the summer helping take care of my grandmother and go to uh, junior college out there so that I could go there and pay less tuition if you were a resident of California, pay very little tuition. And I was trying to go to school in California. So I ended up in work, which is where my family, a lot of my family lives still. And so then I was in San Francisco. And Ended up at the gay bars and the You just ended up there. You just, you just walked out of the and said, Ooh, this sounds kind of comfortable. Oh, yeah. Ooh, man exposed, I think. That will reveal that we're talking about today. But was there somebody in particular that helped you with that to, you know, to take the mystery out of it for you, let's say? The interesting thing was that Castro really wasn't in the gay neighborhood. He said it was Polk Street and it was um, North Beach. Which is where a lot of the so the cross dressing community that I went to, where where a lot of lesbians, it's a very mixed community of people. Um, different. It's a different community. The bar sometimes up until some time of the night entertain one crowd, and then after that they entertain the second crowd. Um, and you also had well part of North Beach is like some of them, but Castro Street really didn't evolve until the early 70s. I moved there in late 69. Um, so there was a lot of different communities, and then I just ended up hanging out with some people. The first time I'd seen a lot of other African American gay people in the bar, realized that you know there was somebody else besides myself who was living this life. And so what did you remember the name of that bar? Uh, was it the Pendulum? No. <laughs> we're, we're showing our age. <laughs> They named the bar, I did not name the bar. No, I don't. I don't. Yeah, so the, now that's that bar is in the cash room. Yes, it is. So that no, no longer, no longer the cash room. I'm blanking on the name, but I will, I will come up with it. But I'm it's okay. showing my age now, I'm blanking on it. But I passed by the neighborhood recently when I was at the Disney, and all the bars are quite different, unfortunately. Well, that's, that's true. Um, We've given up that, that piece of uh, property. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I want to talk a little bit more about San Francisco, but I'm curious to know why you left. Well, I left for a number of reasons. The, I really personally was at a time of transition and change, did a time of transition and change. Um, my mother had just passed away. Um, my sister was living in, in New York. They're queuing me to hold you. And so I felt that I was getting sort of bored with the situation in San Francisco. The gay life there was really sort of stratifying itself around the issues of race. Uh, being from New York, I was curious about what was going on in New York. And I thought, well, this is a good time to go back home, being in New York, and 
to check it out. And I went back for six months and I decided that the East Coast was really something that I felt as an environment was more comfortable to how I wanted to do. Well, it says here that you returned to New York City in 79, virtually reborn when you left 10 years later. So your experience in San Francisco is that extraordinary? Oh, it was a wonderful experience. It was interesting today in service because um, Reverend Patton is talking in his sermon and she mentioned somebody named Cecil Williams who was the pastor at Clyde Memorial Church. I know that he was in San Francisco, but he wasn't specifically gay church, but it was very gay friendly. And so that's where I worship it. it was interesting because Reverend Williams is still a part of the life there since 30 odd years ago. But yes, it was a very informative time for my life, coming out as a gay man, experiencing other men of color. Um, as an out gay man, we had our own organization of sort of third world people against racism and political repression. That was the, that was the, that was the name of our group that we put together. We worked on situations like Angela Davis being imprisoned. Worked on a lot of, we tried to put a gay twist to what was happening politically out in the Bay Area. As if you remember, it was, you know, the Sympathies, the Liberation Army, all of those very I mean, things. Patty Hearst. Patty Hearst. They were saw. All of that. Um, and so we started participating. We had a group of black men that met gay men that met every other week to sort of talk about what our lives were like and how we felt excluded or included in the community. So it was very transformative. So then you are you're definitely a pioneer in that in that uh, realm because in San Francisco the issues still exist and very much. I think they do in many communities. 